Star Wars, The Heart of the Jedi, by Kenneth C. Flint, Chapter 25. Do you have to leave us? The woman called Aislinn asked Luke. She and her fellow refugees were escorting the young Jedi out the path toward, through the rainforest, back to his shuttlecraft. I would gladly turn over my leadership of this community to you, said the Sky Pilot, who had also accompanied them. I am certain its people would be most willing to follow you. It's true, the long -tailed, uh, said the long-tailed one eagerly. We would become your own faithful followers. Stay, you would have peace and freedom out here. Agreed, added the lavender-scaled being. You are the true possessor of the spirit for which we have waited. You alone hold the secret. Allow us learn at your feet. They reached the open airlock where the shuttle sat. Luke stopped here and looked at them. I'm sorry, he said. I can't stay. Here, here is a whole new society of the faithful you could create, the sky pilot pointed out. I understand what you think you want, said Luke, but I'm not one to be proselytizing the Force to others. I'm no master. I don't really know yet if I'm even a true Jedi, or if I even want to be. I won't know until I get there. But you might never return, Iceland said with concern. He will, said the Sky Pilot with confidence. He may not have full belief in his powers, but I do. He is a Jedi. I hope that when he too feels secure in that identity, he will come and join us, lead us. When it's finished, said Luke, once it's resolved, then I'll decide what I want to do. Until then, I can't say anything to you but goodbye. May the Force be with you. May great peace and love go with you, said Aislinn earnestly. She stepped up to kiss him lightly on the cheek. I sense dark tendrils of dilemma entangling your soul, added the Sky Pilot. I hope they may be dispelled by the light of the Force. Storm thrust out a hand to Luke. I too hope you get your answers, Skywalker, the ex-imperial soldier said, now in a more accepting tone, like I've found here. I envy you that, Luke told him sincerely. He took Storm's hand and then exchanged a warm handshake. He stepped away into the lock, paused to wave back to them, then headed for the ship. As he climbed into the shuttle's hatch, the inner door of the airlock slid closed behind him. A small gathering of the Children of the Force watched as the outer door opened, and the landing platform slid out of the dome's side. They continued to watch, regret in their eyes, as the shuttle lifted and flew away, back toward the salvage scout. And they were still watching some while later when the scow's engines fired, and the square craft moved ahead, sailing away from the huge caravan of painted ships and out of sight. Come, my friends, the sky pilot said to the others. Let us return to the center ring. There we can pray together for our young Jedi's success. The light beam shot from the blaster's muzzle, missed the floating sphere of the remote target by a good distance, and ricocheted harmlessly from a control panel in Millennium Falcon's lounge. Lay aside in frustration. No, Gowen, she said. You're holding it too tight. She stepped to the man who stood with the weapon in hand, looking helpless. She adjusted his grip on its butt. There. Don't jerk the trigger. Squeeze it. Slow and steady, okay? Ready? She looked to the floating sphere, ordering. Again, remote. The ball once more began to zigzag around in the cabin, no more than two yards away from him. He tried to get a bead on it. He fired. The shot went wide again. It hit the edge of the doorway to the cockpit corridor just as Han Solo was coming through. The light bulb bounced away only inches from his face. He flinched back. Whoa, hey, watch it, he cried, hands lifted in defense. It was just a target practice beam, she told him. It can't hurt you. Oh, sure, I knew that. He said quickly, straightening up and coming on in. So, how's our boy doing? Near to hopeless, I'm afraid, Leia told him. Well, I'm so sorry, Gowen said indignantly. I did warn you. How about the senator? Asked Khan, looking toward the older man who sat by watching Gowen display 
watching Goen's display with open amusement. The lady sm smiled. I'll show you. He got up from his seat, took the blaster from Goen, and assumed a shooter stance, weapon ready. Again, remote, he ordered. The metal sphere moved, so did the gun. Its beam zapped the remote five times in quick succession as it ducked across the room. The lady lowered the blaster and looked at Han. Not bad for an old man, eh? He said with a note of pride. Hey, not shabby for anyone, said an impressed Han. What do you think, Princey? He asked Goen. Goen growled in irritation but didn't answer. Well, said Han, I gotta tell y'all, we just passed the frontier. We're in unknown regions now. Trouble is, how do we find Luke from here? He turned to Leia. Time for that next step, sweetheart? I'm not sure I can tell you what it is, she said. Let's go forward where I can see outside. Maybe that'll help. What about me? Asked Gowen. You keep practicing, she told him. Senator, why don't you try and teach him? My pleasure, he said. And as Han and Leia went out, they heard Valadian begin the lesson in lecturing tone. All right, my boy. Just relax now. Try to lead your target a little. I think he'll ever catch on? Han asked her as they went up the corridor. She shook her head. I doubt it. Well, maybe if a storm squad of stormtroopers stood right in front of him, he might hit one. Or maybe with great diplomacy skills, it can convince him to kill himself, he suggested. But a blaster, I don't know if he'd be a bigger threat to them or us. They came into the cockpit. Chewbacca was alone at the controls. Okay, Chewie, I'm back, said Han. How's it going? The Wookiee gave a terse, all right, snarl. We're just staying on a straight line, heading right into them. We're just staying on a straight line, heading right into it, Han explained to Leia as he settled into his seat. But ain't, that ain't going to get us anywhere unless we're the luckiest fools in the galaxy. What about it, Leia? Where do you think we should go? He dropped down onto a seat behind him, but she didn't reply. After a minute, he replied, Anything? No answer. Leia? He said, looking around. Leia? She sat stiffly on the seat, eyes open and staring fixedly ahead. He seemed almost to be in some form of trance. She returned and looked around at her, too, then barked a question. Quiet, Han cautioned him. I think she's got something. He and the Wookiee watched her expectantly for several moments. At last, she blinked and shook her head, coming back to life. Let me take the controls, she said determinedly to Han, standing and moving up to him. You want to fly? He said in surprise. We want to find Luke, he said. Yes, I'll have to steer us by feel. You can feel him then? Just faintly, and it comes and goes. She met his gaze with an oddly intense one. Han... There's something else out there. Something big. Luke's headed for it. Sure? Pretty sure it's got to do with the Force. That much I can sense. I may not be able to stay with him, but I can certainly home in on it. It's almost like... Hear it. She hesitated, struggling with a vague concept. Like something... Calling me. Okay, he conceded, getting up from the pilot's chair and offering to her. What have we got to lose? Luke, she said grimly, settling into the seat. All right, then, Captain Thad said to his chief work droid he nicknamed Mac. Just check the power converter and the primaries over good. Make sure there are no leaks. Can't afford to be losing any more energy. Aye, aye, Captain, the droid replied snappishly, then turned and headed out to the bridge door. Is there anything else I can do to help? Offered Luke. Pretty good with engines. No, the Ewok said. Not a good idea here. That HK engine's getting pretty old. Bit too much loose radiation in that core for the likes of us. Leave it to Mac. He'll check it out all right. I don't think there's any damage. Still, I also didn't think the run-in with uh, that cruiser would deplete the primary cells so far. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry for, Luke assured. But you're positive we can still make it safely. And get back? And that power generator will handle that easily. So long as we keep our speed at a quarter sublight. 
There's certain you wouldn't rather turn around and find a spot to recharge. If we don't need to, yes, I am, Luke said decisively. It would take longer to do that than to go on, no matter how slow. Besides, he added, looking intently out into the space ahead, I'm too close now. The pull of whatever's out there is very strong. I've got to find out what it is. I've got to get this finished. Eh, you'll have no argument for me, mate, said the Ewok. He consulted his navigational instrument readouts. And you're right. We're getting close to that spot of yours. Come near half the distance from that fleet of vagabonds to your coordinates. He looked to Luke. Now, are you certain you want me to taking you all the way in now? What about this great secret you said it was? It doesn't seem to be much of one anymore, does it? Luke said. No reason for you not to know by, about it by now, but I have got to go to the actual place myself. It would be dangerous for you. I'm quite content to let you go alone, that assured. Well, then, might as well settle back for a while and rest. He glanced at the rather tense-looking Luke and smiled. I'll rest as much as you can, anyway. I can wait, said Luke, visibly forcing himself to relax. He even smiled a little in return. After all, it's not like anyone's chasing me. Ha <laughs> ha! Dramatic irony. Hi, Admiral on the bridge! A junior officer announced as Tharkis stepped onto the deck of the warship's control room. What is this news that drags me from my sleep, Captain? He asked irritably, striding out to the front view windows where Vascor stood. I thought you'd want to know at once, sir. We've completed the final calculations from the new data. Pinpointed the exact location to which Skywalker is headed. I've had our own course plotted for it. Can we get to this spot in time? demanded Tharkis. Most certainly we can now, Admiral. Of course, we've only been able to use limited hyperdrive in this uncharted region of space. Our astrogation charts are vastly incomplete. The risk of collision is too great. Still, at sublight, we should have no difficulty. Then make it so at once, Captain. Set course. Is this Star Trek? Make it so? I think it's Star Trek. A junior officer approached Uner. Excuse me, Captain. We've picked up the blips of a great many ships. Hundreds, in fact. Hundreds? said Vascor in surprise, turning to him. Who are they? We've no idea, sir. The ships are mostly small, but quite densely packed. They've formed up in the screen right across our course. They'll be coming into visual range in a few seconds. At that same moment aboard the bio ship, a loud voice was speaking up, echoing about at the dome from loudspeakers on all sides. Sky pilot, are you there? The leader and a group of his followers, seated at the meditation in the central ring of stones, looked up. Their concentration broken, the sky pilot raised his voice to call back. Yes, what is it? Control room here. We've had word from some of the ships. Their sensors are picking up a vessel. Is it Skywalker's ship coming back? No, another one. Much larger. Wait, it looks like an Imperial Star Destroyer. Star Destroyer said Storm. Will they finally be coming here after us? Be calm, the sky pilot advised. After so long ignoring us, why would they wish to do that now? The war has ended, remember. Shall we have the ships scatter? A voice from the speaker asked. No, said the leader. As children of peace, I think we should meet them. On the Star Destroyer, Tharkis was now peering ahead through the bridge window. Sparkling dots on the many ships were now becoming visible against the black. So thick they seemed like a summer night's swarm of fireflies. Order a full stop, Captain, he ordered. Let's not do anything rash. At Vascor's command, the Star Destroyer slowed to hang dead in space. They were close enough to the strange fleet for individual ships to be discerned now, and Tharkas stared out at the gradually painted craft curiously. At the godly painted craft curiously. Why are they marked that way? he asked. Have we stumbled into a restricted zone for the insane? He pointed out the flower-shaped one right ahead. Look at that monstrosity. Wholly unsuited for deep space. Message coming in, High Admiral, said an officer at the communications console. Tharkis and the captain stepped in. They listened as a voice came over the speaker. Hello, Imperial ship. We welcome you in the name of the new peace. 
you peace, said Vascor. What would they know of that? Skywalker, said Tharkis with certainty. He must have been here. He must have told them. His vessel's not with them, sir. His vessel's not with them, sir, the captain pointed out. No, he's gone on and left this barrier in our path. But just who are they? They could certainly be more than enough firepower on a fleet that size to give us a hot fight. As if indirect to his concerns, the voice spoke again. Imperial ship, please respond. You have entered a realm that is not part of the Empire or Alliance. You will not be harmed. Those of us who live here are conscientious objectors across the galaxy seeking only to live in peace. Why, they're damned shirkers, Dargus declared. Cowards, hiding away out here. Now they think they can come to us and beg our understanding. Sensor reports coming in, I Admiral, said another officer. They are unarmed. What? All of them? asked an unbelieving Tharkis. Yes, sir. We can't detect a single weapon on any ship. Impossible. No, sir. There are some which would likely have carried armaments, but even they have none. It seems like they were f stripped. Pacifistic fools. Tharkis spat out contemptuously. They've left themselves defenseless. Imperial ship, we welcome you, the voice came again, if you come in peace. Otherwise, we recommend that you depart back to Imperial space. Captain, uh, the High Admiral said thirstily, we've no time to waste here. Wipe that useless vermin from our way. On the bio ship, the sky pilot and the group of his followers with him looked out through the dome to the stationary wedge of the big battleship. Something's wrong, said Storm uneasily. They're not acknowledging our transmissions. I, I feel something dark from them, said his leader, looking to the ex-warrior in alarm. Storm, they're not here for peace. They mean to destroy us. They're after Luke, after the Force itself. Get our ships out of here. Control room here, the amplified, amplified voice boomed across the dome insurgency. Sky pilot, they're bearing we bringing weapons to bear. Control room shouted Storm. Tell all the ships to... The intended warning was too late. A torrent of fire erupted from the Man of War as all its batteries unleashed a simultaneous salvo. The bolts of emerald turbo laser fire flashed into the massive ships, packed so close together that almost every shot was a hit. A score of the painted craft exploded, some taking out others close by with their swelling balls of flame and debris. Warships' fire continued furiously. The small ships taken off guard, stayed put for fatal long moments as more and more were hit, the whole zone of space becoming a brilliant fireworks display of br bursting fireballs. On the bio ship, they looked up through the dome in horror at the chaos around them. Why are they doing this? The sky pilot cried out in agony. We wouldn't have harmed them. My people. My children. Overcome by the shock, he dropped to his knees. Sky pilot, we can't stay here. Storm called to him with no effect. He dragged the man up and shook him, trying to get through. Sky pilot, we've got to get away. I was mad, the broken man said heedless of him. I was mad to think there could ever be any peace with them. The turbo laser beam slammed into an outer petal. It took the entire segment in a single explosion, sending a dense plume of container shards and shredded foliage spurting away. The stricken vessel was sent spinning wildly, careening through the rest of the fleet out of control. Another of its petals sliced into a small ship, ripping away the section's end as it destroyed the vessel. Atmosphere, plants, ground, water, animals, all were sucked away. The broken blossom of the bioship spun on, spun on, sweeping out of the fire zone and away into the black. Behind it, the rest of the ships were able to fight. Still able were finally scattering. They shot away in all directions, leaving the debris and broken hulls of hundreds of vessels drifting in space. The batteries of the Man of War fired on for a time, methodically blasting any ships which still looked intact into blazing particles. Then, it fell silent. All targets within range have been destroyed, sir, Captain Vasco reported to his high admiral. Very good, Darkus told him. Did any of them escape? A few dozen, sir. No more. No matter, the high admiral told him haughtily. Their time will come too. Vasco... When we control the galaxy, we will not leave one such weak-minded being alive. Now take us ahead, Captain. 
we have a rendezvous.